Hello everyone. So the purpose of this video is to just get a little more in depth in uh, into Gina triggers and how to manage them to best work with you know whatever you're doing in game. So you downloaded one of my Gina trigger packages off my website. Lovely. You install them, you merge them, whatever into your your Gina folder. But then you just see a giant list of just triggers. And that might not be very helpful. Especially if you have a lot of things going on, including raid triggers and other stuff. Just seeing one just giant list on your screen. So I'm going to just open up my Gina program here. I'm going to go to my Druid folder. So when you open Gina, the first thing you're going to see is the Home tab. And this is pretty much where everybody stops. Um, but you can do a lot of cool things with your triggers. When you receive a Gina trigger package, the one thing you got to really be mindful of are the categories assigned to triggers. And I'm gonna explain this a little bit further. So besides getting the trigger package from somebody, you're also inheriting inheriting whatever categories they have assigned to specific triggers. I'm just going to go into one of the, the Druid ones here. So Destructive Vortex, this is part of like my burn abilities on a Druid. Um, when you open up this trigger, you're going to notice there's a category assigned to it. Personal Actives. And then when you go into the cooldown version, you're going to notice there's another category assigned, personal cooldowns. So, in short, when you download, let's say, my Druid trigger package, you're going to also have my categories that I assigned to my triggers inherited into your category section. And I'd be very careful with this because some people assign their own categories to things you can easily, easily end up with a list of like at least 100 categories. And those categories are going to be meaningless to you um, unless you do something with them. So I'm pretty diligent when I get triggers or trigger packages from people to go into my category section and delete or adjust, you know, whatever I need uh, based on my own settings. So how do you use these categories that you see are assigned to triggers when you open them up? Um, for my packages, I keep them, I try to keep them all the same. Um, let's see, I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I have, I generally limit it to six categories. Um, so ADPS active, ADPS cooldown, When you toggle between both of these categories, they are both assigned to an overlay for my timers. Um, they're assigned to an overlay called ADPS timers. The default category I have this assigned to a default overlay. For my Enchanter Knight's Perpetual Tower, there's a specific overlay for it called MPT list. This way I just see a list of MPTs that either myself or other Enchanters are casting, so this way we don't double up on MPTs. Personal actives and personal cooldowns, I have those assigned to a personal timers overlay. And I'll show you how these overlays appear. Uh, the other thing um, in each of these categories, uh, they're also color coded. So 
So how does this work? What, is it, what does this mean? We're going to go now to the overlays tab. And I have four overlays. You basically add an overlay and then you name it, do whatever you want with it. So I have four overlays that correspond to where the categories are being assigned to. I'm going to click on them right now. So this is the default overlay, personal timers overlay, ADPS timers overlay, and my MPT list overlay. And I have everything color coded. I'm just going to go back to the category section again. Um, I have it color coded too, just so I can see it better on my screen. And here you can adjust like the size, the you know other things you feel like adjusting, but just so you see how the area it's going to appear on on my screen whenever I have triggers with timers. So I'm going to just turn these off so you see how it works. Uh, let's see. If, uh, when I do a Seasons Wrap debuff, it's going to appear in my default overlay box. And this is also where all my general raid triggers are going to appear as well, anything that has timers. When I do group wolf or receive group wolf, group you're going to see that's in my ADPS timers box or overlay. When I'm burning and I'm using like personal things. That's under my personal overlay box. So you see how I have everything color coded, everything neatly separated. This way I don't have like a giant disaster on my screen of like one list of things. And what my enchanter does, uh, IOG, IOG. Just, I just need to swap back. I also see my enchanter's IOG. So this is helpful because I get to also keep track of, you know, other ADPS things happening. You know, maybe I want to prepare my personal stuff for like another round of burns. Um, or hold off on it, you know, when I see something's about to be off cooldown soon. So this this is how you want to really compartmentalize your triggers. I mean, you can do whatever you want, color code it, the, you know, however you wish, add more overlays than what I've already shown. But this is why you see categories populate when you install somebody's trigger package. Uh, one thing to add, I'm going to just, uh, I want to show you guys the Knights Perpetual Terror list. So if I cast MPT on a player, you're going to see that's now populating in my MPT overlay list. This is going to end up being a giant list with several enchanters casting MPT. But again, the purpose of this list is for you guys to just not double up on MPT on players. You're usually going to be doing this when you're sitting around and waiting, you know, for a raid to start or be triggered. IOG off. The cool thing about my MPT trigger 
I'm gonna just go into it. When you go into the MPT timer trigger and you go into the timer tab, there's a section which says end early text. And you can put like multiple values here. But when I type end MPT in group, in group chat, it's going to just make the list vanish. And uh, that's something that, you know, I like to do. I don't want to stare at a list of like 20 players MPT'd. And if for whatever reason I, I do keep the list active while I'm raiding, um, you know, if somebody dies, their name will get cleared off the list. Group Just uh, things like that. So just to kind of show you in action, I'm just going to drag out my, my windows because I know they're hidden. So by default, my chat is set to speak in group by default. So if I do end MPT, you see it says you tell your party end MPT and the list just vanished. So that's how I declutter my screen with a giant list of MPTs. So I hope this was helpful. Um, again, always double check the categories as soon as you get a trigger package from somebody. So this way you can sort it out into your own like overlays however you wish. And that's pretty much it. So feel free to drop any questions here if uh, you need help with anything further.